We're continuing with the cardiovascular system, which is also called the circulatory system. This week, the focus will be on blood vessels, so I may use the term circulatory system more often since the circulation piece is what we're focusing on. So as a way to review where we've been and where we're going, um, I'm gonna have you actually do this. So let's do a learning check, answer these questions. Okay, the three components of the cardiovascular system are the heart, the blood vessels, all three of these shown here are blood vessels, and of course the blood that travels in this system. We've talked about the blood a couple weeks ago. We talked about the heart in detail. We spent two weeks on the heart and how it's a muscular pump that's gonna create the pressure that allows for flow throughout circulation. That last piece is going to be key for talking about the blood vessels. So this week we'll talk about the structure and function of blood vessels and blood pressure. Blood pressure is super important. Um, it has to be maintained throughout circulation and that starts in the heart. So we will refer back to things like cardiac output this week. Okay, second, three types of blood vessels and their function. We've got arteries. These go away from the heart. They're efferent vesicles, ve vessels. We've got capillaries. These are exchange vessels. This is where exchange occurs with the body tissues, either the lungs or any other part of the body, every other part of the body, not just any, every part is gonna have um, capillaries. And then veins. So this is going to go to the heart, carry blood back to the heart. All right, lastly, um, describe how the cardiovascular system interacts with another organ system. So you could choose one, pretty much any organ system you can think of, you should have been able to describe some interaction. So we've talked about endocrine this semester. Um, endocrine system, the definition of that is a hormone is produced and secreted in the bloodstream, transported in the bloodstream. So it relies on the cardiovascular system in blood, um, digestive system. So in order for nutrients to be absorbed and then transported to the liver and then ultimately the rest of the body, um, you have to have circulation. Um, urinary, we haven't done that yet, but we will look at the filtration of blood to either become urine or stay blood. What else? Skeletal muscles depend on having oxygen and glucose and having the carbon dioxide and waste taken back up. Lymphatic is one that we will talk about some next week. Um, it's actually another type of circulation in the body that is produces white blood cells for defense, but then also um, has vessels that carry fluid throughout and interact directly with the blood vessels. So we'll look at that a little bit. Um, I'm probably missing something because really it could be anything. Integumentary, right? So the skin itself, um, heat loss through the skin, as well as of course needing um, get exchange of, of everything. You may have thought of something else, that's fine. Okay, one other picture I wanna show you for this introduction here is this is gonna be in just a moment. This image shows, right, the capillaries and the, the vessels that are the, the veins and the arteries. You can see that these vessels travel throughout the entire body. There's one more image I wanna show you for the first um, slide here, just to get a kind of a more accurate, a little bit more accurate depiction of this. In reality, so here is our pulmonary circuit up here. Pretty simple, right? Goes to the lungs, that's it. Gas exchange across um, those capillaries of the lung. The systemic circuit in reality is a whole bunch of circuits in parallel. So what I mean by that is this is parallel to this, is parallel to this. There is branching, tons of branching that occurs from the aorta to form various smaller um, arteries, arterioles, and then capillaries. And these capillary beds, upper body, right? Actually many, not just one. Um, this would be hepatic, so liver, this is kidney, um, and then lower body, right? Again, very general. Each of these actually has more than one. Um, 
there are capillary beds associated with every single tissue that you have. All of your cells need to be very close to capillaries. So just kind of keep that idea in mind. And then also note, this is a closed circulation system, um, circulatory system. So I mentioned last week or the week before, there's also a type that's open where this blood would just be kind of diffuse out into the tissues here and then there would not be a vein returning it to the heart. So that's a system um, that's actually similar in that you've got exchange happening here. Our capillaries are very leaky but we do have a closed circuit. So the blood is coming back to the heart. That's more efficient, allows pressure to be maintained more easily. It's more efficient oxygen delivery and carbon dioxide uptake than the open um, body plan. Open circulatory systems would often be um, present in smaller animals and often insects. So it's a, it's a closed plumbing 